Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today I want to talk about the INFJ Doris Lamb. And okay, so there's probably nothing more widely discussed than the INFJ Doris Lamb. And whether you are an INFJ or somebody who has been Doris Lamb by an INFJ, I hope this video will help you understand what the Doris Lamb is, what the Doris Lamb looks like, and what you can do after or before the Doris Lamb happens. So first of all, I want to talk about what the Doris Lamb is. And the door slam is an abrupt, immediate departure from another person. It is a direct, I will never talk to you again. Uh, the door is completely shut. I have no interest in anything about you at all. I am completely done with this relationship or friendship or whatever it is. And uh, I think uh, in some ways uh, you could even say that there is something admirable about this ability to just immediately break off completely from a person. No back and forth, no half-hearted, uh, uh, no, or maybe, uh, I don't know, but just a complete determined, complete, I'm gone, I'm done, this is over. The INFJ is known for the door slam, and perhaps uh, this is unfair because obviously there are more types that can door slam and anyone can close a door if they want to do so, uh, but, there is a reason why INFJs are sometimes associated with this. Because for a lot of the time, INFJs are a lot more abrupt when they make a decision. INFJs are often people that value harmony in relationships. That means INFJs seek to keep the peace of the relationship. The INFJ is the person that tries to smoothen over conflict. The INFJ is the one that carries through hardship. The INFJ is the one that tends to singularly focus on the well-being of the other person at the expense of the self. That means INFJs are more likely to end up in one-sided relationships where INFJs pour their hearts into another person without getting anything in return. And because INFJs often struggle to express conflict or confusion or struggles or hardship during these times, when the INFJ has actually decided it's too much to bear, it will often appear abrupt to the other person. When an INFJ makes their will to slam the door known to the other person, the other person is often caught unaware. The other person had no idea that the INFJ was suffering at all. The other person had no idea that the INFJ was carrying such a burden. The other person had no idea that the INFJ was struggling so much. So as a person on the other side of this, as a person who has experienced door slam, it can be very difficult to know how to cope with this. I had no idea. Why, did, why didn't they tell me? Why didn't they talk to me? Maybe we could have worked it out. Maybe there was something we could have done. And uh, so this brings out the dark side of the door slam. A lot of the time, the door slam could have been avoided if the INFJ was more comfortable expressing their own feelings and better at setting their own boundaries. And so I want to talk about what you as an INFJ can do to avoid the door slam and what a partner or friend of an INFJ can do before the door slam occurs. And the first thing I would recommend is just to recognize the warning signs. Recognize when you are frustrated with another person. Recognize when you are starting to struggle. Recognize when it's becoming difficult for you. The INFJ is the careful mix of two incredible forces. First, the force of idealism. Second, the force of composure. That means INFJs represent composed idealism, controlled, contained desire towards good and doing good. INFJs love to control their feelings, to temper their feelings, to shape their feelings, to shape their humanity, to shape their values, to represent an ideal towards the world. And so INFJs like to appear great. And here there is a bad habit, unhealthy INFJs have a bad habit of denying themselves human feelings. And that means, as an INFJ, dismissing your own frustration or annoyance and telling yourself it's unwarranted or telling yourself you shouldn't feel a certain way, you shouldn't feel anger, you shouldn't feel pain, you shouldn't feel hardship because these feelings lead towards 
uh, bad outcome and you often develop this kind of idea from your childhood because you see people that are angry and you see people that because of anger do stupid things and so you think by denying yourself anger you can do good and so here is the first part the first part of the door slam starts with denial you know long-term prolonged denial uh, long-term prolonged suffering and contained composed suffering because the feelings are there the feelings will stay there unless you resolve them and so you must learn as an INFJ to first of all listen to your own feelings it even helps if you can write down your feelings or just make a note of them just bring them out into the open or put them down so make them real make them present and be present in your own body and in your own feelings Secondly, I would say the second step is to just learn to open up to other people about what you are feeling and what you are struggling with. And here it's uh, the first step of setting boundaries. The first part of setting boundaries is just making your feelings known to other people. Already, if you can do this, you are already starting to set some healthy and strong and solid boundaries because good people will respect good boundaries. And if you can communicate clearly what you need, you can also help other people understand what you need and you can help other people support your boundaries. So part of this is when people ask for help or if you see people are struggling, make it known what you need in order to help them. And don't be afraid to ask for something back and say, I will definitely be there for you, but uh, note that this is going to cost a lot of energy or time for me, so I might be more stressed or I might need more time to unwind or I might need some time to relax afterwards or understand that, yeah, I can do this for you and I would be happy to help you with this, but it is going to require this or this. So just start having a dialogue about your needs and an open dialogue about costs and cause and effect so uh, that other people also know that uh, the magic of the INFJ or the help or the support of an INFJ is not free of charge and it always has to come from something and uh, an INFJ cannot just summon or put something out into the world without getting anything back because that will cause an INFJ to feel empty. The third step I think is uh, if you have made your feelings known to other people and you still feel that they don't get it or they don't listen to you or they don't hear you or they continue to step on your boundaries and they forget or they don't listen to or they keep repeatedly doing something that will come at the effect of your own health or your own well-being as an INFJ. Uh, just let them know that when they do this has negative effects on you. So uh, I understand that you forgot and that can happen but that caused me to feel this or that way. Basically just remind them once again of consequences. Yeah, yeah you can step on my boundaries and it will happen and you will make, make mistakes, but it will have these effects on me. So this caused me to feel angry, or this caused me to feel frustrated, or this caused me to uh, feel pain, or this caused me to feel sad, or this ca caused me to feel a bit betrayed. You know, th those kind of feelings are so important because they also remind the other person that actions have consequences. They caused you to feel a certain way. They influenced you, they stepped on your boundaries and they had this effect on your behavior. Now, this brings us to the most important point of the INFJ door slam, and that is INFJs tend to assume that other people can read minds. INFJs assume that they can unconsciously project what they are feeling to other people and that other people know what you as an INFJ are feeling without you having to express it to them. So INFJs can assume that other people know your boundaries, feel your boundaries, understand your emotions, understand your feelings, but you don't have to say it to them. And so this is actually a falsehood. Most people have no time to, no ability to read your feelings or just magically guess what is happening inside of you because they might be caught up in their own stress, their own struggles, their own hardship. So people can be so self-absorbed, naturally self-absorbed. People are naturally self-absorbed because people can naturally get caught up in their own feelings and in their own struggles and in their own hardship. And so recognize this. Not everyone is going to be able to read your mind and you can't expect this of other people. You have to help other people. 
understand what you're feeling. You have to learn to communicate. So what does the INFJ doors then look like and what happens if you've gone that far and if you really come to the door slam? First, I want to distinguish between two forms of door slams. One is the door slam itself and one is actually not really a door slam. When an INFJ ghosts, and I've talked about this in other videos, INFJ ghosting. When an INFJ ghosts, that is not actually a door slam. When an INFJ just disappears without a word, when an INFJ leaves without a trace, without communication, just runs away from a situation, that is not a door slam. The door is not actually shut. So if you as an INFJ just disappear without a trace from another person, if you pull away, if you block the person on Facebook and remove all traces of yourself online, if you ghost another person, that is not a door slam and that's not going to cause the door to feel closed. You're still going to keep this person in your mind and you're still going to harbor regrets and you're still going to harbor struggles. And a lot of the time, from my experience, INFJ ghosting doesn't actually work. A lot of times, INFJ will eventually recover from the situation that caused them to run away and regain courage and reopen communication. That means at some point you're going to have to confront the other person and talk to them. And when that happens, you might have made a terrible mistake and uh, you might not be able to get that chance. You might not be able to get that true feeling of closure and you might prolong the suffering not just for yourself but also for the other person. The other person has no chance to understand why you did what you did. The other person can only guess what was going on in your mind. And once again, don't assume that the other person knew what was on your mind. Don't assume that the other person knows what you're feeling. The dark side of the INFJ and INFJ door slamming is this feeling that the other person knows what I'm feeling and deliberately beats my boundaries, disrespects me and hurts my feelings. The other person actually knew all along everything and intentionally manipulated me, controlled me, let this happen. And this dark side is uh, important to confront because INFJs can fall into martyrhood and can fall into the state of uh, assumed villainhood, uh, assuming villainhood in other people creating your own villains, creating in your mind the idea of the other person as uh, this narcissist, this evil force that uh, has absolutely zero compassion and absolutely zero remorse. And uh, because this is completely false, or could be completely false, uh, this is also dark, this is also unhealthy, this is also going to cause you pain and unnecessary hardship. But it's all there, it's all part of the door slam, it's all part of what leads up to the door slam and why the door slam becomes so harsh. Because once you build up your idea of another person as a villain, once you're so sure of yourself or of the other person as some dark villainous force, once you're so sure of the other person as a narcissist, you can say anything you want to them, you can do anything to them, you can cause, use any words you feel to hurt them, you can uh, come up with any kind of excuse to cause them pain or hardship. Because as an INFJ, you only have to be compassionate towards those that this have compassion and that can understand it. And uh, that's kind of the uh, back, uh, back door of the INFJ. That's kind of the uh, secret, uh, um, uh, what should you call, mechanism an INFJ uses to allow themselves to hurt and harm other people. Now, the INFJ door slam can sometimes be warranted, and it's really after prolonged feelings of hurt and disapproval. If you have communicated to the other person what you feel, if you have been clear with the other person, and if you feel that there is no improvement, the other person will keep run, pushing your boundaries, even though you made it clear to them what pain they cause you when they do so. Then the door slam is the only way out. Then, in that sense, you can only be clear to the other person that, yeah, I think we're going to have to end this because I don't see any positive way forward. And honestly, I've made it clear to you what I need, but I think we're just too different and I just feel like we cannot see each other as clearly and I feel that this relationship is not healthy. And ultimately, what I've found as an INFJ is I don't want to have that 100% door slam 
Uh, I don't want to have that 100% you're out of my life completely. I want to reach a point where that person can be in the same room as me and where I won't care a single bit about them, where we will just be two different people in the same room who have no relationship to one another and they can be there and they can be present and they can do whatever they want to. Uh, and I can be myself and I can do what I want to. And we don't have to influence each other in any specific way. You want to reach that point where you're fully, uh, when the door is fully closed and you're fully understood the situation and you've forgiven the other person and you've moved on 100% and you're just at peace with the situation. You've found your sum, you've found your calm. So this was my video on INFJ door slam. My question to you guys is, have you experienced INFJ door slam or have you door slammed somebody? And how do you feel about that situation today? Thank you all for watching this video and I hope to see you all in the next one.